Hello, welcome to a session of Surgical Pathology Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, made possible by the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. So our case today is uh, from the realm of GI pathology. It's a 67-year-old man with a transverse colon mass. Of course, typically uh, an elderly patient with a uh, constricting lesion in the colon would be uh, primarily thinking about carcinoma. And in fact, on biopsy, uh, we see multiple fragments of uh, tumor here, uh, some benign glandular tissue. Uh, and then we note here an abnormal proliferation sort of deep to the muscularis mucosa. Uh, an abnormal pattern here in fragments like this and this, um, without evidence of, uh, you know, the usual sort of disorderly glandular appearance. So this is a, a bit of an atypical appearance from low magnification. Um, and so we can come in on higher magnification and see that this is uh, an infiltrative pattern of tumor cells, very dark, fairly small looking cells, and there's uh, evidently some ulceration. It tends to be a little bit on the uh, uh, deep, uh, heavy uh, component of things. Uh, and we see there's this pattern of uh, almost plasmacytoid cells uh, with a number of cells with a little bit of a clear space in uh, some of the uh, um, cytoplasm, perinuclear uh, clearing with the Nucleus sort of pushed to the side. We'll look here at another area, another fragment, uh, just to sort of confirm that. Uh, and here we see the tumor uh, extending up into the mucosa, or involving the mucosa at least. Again, with this uh, eccentric uh, nucleus, uh, small clear spaces uh, within the cytoplasm, and obviously uh, destructive of the uh, underlying uh, normal mucosa. So this is a diffuse type of neoplasm. It looks like it's probably a carcinoma. And we have some areas which show uh, apparently a signet ring type of morphology. Um, so with that uh, type of uh, understanding, I'll just take a look here at one other area here. Uh, and here we can see maybe there's some lymphatic involvement, uh, single cells, uh, in these uh, lymphatic-like spaces. Um, and here, again, we see up in the mu mucosa some possible lymphatic involvement uh, by this tumor. So what do we think about with signet ring cells? Uh, one of the things that, of course, is going to first come to mind is the possibility of metastasis, uh, because certainly signet ring cell carcinoma is uh, not very common in the colon. If we list them here in terms of relative frequencies, uh, colon is quite a ways down the list, just above prostate, lung, and skin, um, and far uh, less frequent than stomach or distal esophagus. Uh, the breast, of course, uh, needs to be remembered. This is a male, but uh, not impossible. Um, and then gallbladder, bladder, pancreas are other sites. Um, it's important to remember that uh, some of these tumors, uh, particularly those most commonly seen in the breast and stomach, can be associated with CDH1 germline mutation, uh, giving a syndrome of so-called hereditary diffuse gastric carcinoma. Uh, but these can be seen uh, in both uh, breast lobular type carcinomas and probably also is associated with colon tumors. Uh, in, of note, uh, these colon tumors uh, tend to occur in the rather young patients, uh, often in their 20s and early 30s. Uh, our patient, much older, probably not in that category. Um, but it's worth uh, considering. Uh, so further investigation would be warranted, some immunohistochemistries and investigation of the patient's history. So, in fact, the patient has a history of a prior malignancy uh, involving the upper urinary tract. Uh, and so here uh, is a uh, stain, 
Um, and as you can see, it's uh, strongly positive in all of the tumor cells. Uh, this is a GATA3 stain. Now that's not entirely specific for bladder. Uh, of course, it can also be seen in many breast cancers and some squamous cancers and so forth. But in the setting of a patient who has a history of a prior uh, upper urinary tract lesion and now has a uh, similar appearing lesion in the colon, uh, we come to the conclusion that this is a metastatic um, <clears throat> urothelial carcinoma with signet ring type morphology. So uh, what happens with uh, urothelial tumors? What is their usual pattern of spread? Well, uh, signet ring cell carcinoma, first of all, is extremely unusual in the urinary tract. Um, most frequently seen in the bladder, where of course you have the urachus, which has glandular type mucosa and can give rise to this lesion. But its occurrence from an upper urinary tract site is extremely uncommon. However, we do know that urothelial tumors can be rather heteromorphous and can exhibit areas of squamous glandular and other morphologies uh, fairly regularly. When you think about patterns of spread, uh, most typically urothelial carcinoma is going to go to the lymph nodes, bone, lung, and liver. Uh, with these other sites, um, much less frequent. And as you see, intestinal sites uh, out of all tumors, out of all metastatic tumors, is less than 3% uh, compared to you know, 60 or 70% uh, for lymph nodes. So uh, an uncommon site for metastasis, an uncommon tumor, uh, <clears throat> we're really talking about a zebra with uh, pink stripes rather than black and white stripes here, I guess. Uh, but uh, that is uh, part of the challenge and the joy uh, in uh, doing surgical pathology and solving some of these uh, mysteries that we come across from day to day. So our final sign-out sign diagnosis on this case is metastatic urothelial carcinoma, metastatic to the colon. Uh, with signet ring morphology. We hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for joining us uh, for our program today. Uh, we hope that uh, this has provided some insight into how we approach uh, lesions that are uncommon um, and that you will uh, find this uh, useful. Please uh, feel free to uh, share this with your friends if you've uh, uh, found it to be useful. And uh, we certainly hope that uh, you'll subscribe. So hit that little uh, uh, button and uh, join us for future releases from our channel. So until next time, uh, this is, thank you so much for joining us.